we have structure in society. We have rules. We have guidelines. We have these, this school of thought, this vein of thinking that provides a pulse for each community, each tribe, each culture, each country, each nation, each person that enables them to fit in and function. Um, but I was reading an aphorism from The Dawn of the Day by Nietzsche, and he's talking about that concept of mimicry, where animals in nature will um, camouflage themselves to fit in. They'll copy their environment. They copy their surroundings. Um, and sometimes this is to prey on other time or other animals, but many times it's it's to avoid um, being prey, it's to avoid the predators, it's to just go unnoticed. We even see the possum that has this biological instinct within to pass out, play dead. It's it's not um, even a choice. We found out it's kind of this natural instinct just to play dead and hope that you won't become a victim. And I think um, we're in a state of society where people are just fitted in. We're this concept, the silent majority in America, right? That if they just stood up and voiced their opinion, then a lot of this crazy nonsense, this this propaganda that's being absorbed and believed um, would be um, distinguished, diminished, if that silent majority would stand up. But we found this comfort zone. And I think we're taught this comfort zone is to just fit in. You get by, you follow the rules, you, f you follow the person in front of you, you're kind of on this, this assembly line. And if you just stay the course, then everything's going to be okay, you'll be okay, you won't stir up any trouble. And we're sold this, this idea, and I think, it, for the most part, that it's a good idea to follow, because it, it helps us to s sustain some direction, some function, um, gives us a solid foundation. I think the guy to the left of me, he does this. The guy um, before me did it, um, and it worked for them. So I'm just going to kind of fit in, lower my head, and um, suck it up. But I'm reading um, a book, Archaeo Futurism. Archaeo, Archaeo Futurism. I hope I'm saying that right. Archaeo Futurism by Gilliam Fay. Um, he's kind of this European right guy from the 70s and 80s, but he, I think he published this book in the late 90s. Um, but he has this concept of, if we want to return to some form of tradition, that archaeo, archaeo, archaeo uh, meaning tradition or the past into the future, is kind of the concept of his book, is bringing tradition, bringing the principles of the tradition, not into the now. The now, he said, is kind of decadent and destroyed and degenerate, but we bring those thoughts of tradition into now so that we can create a future. It's not going to change the now, but hopefully we can change it in a generation or two. And he's strong in that, bringing back that tradition, but he says it takes a radical thought. Right? He has this concept of a radical thought to remove us from the ideologies that are causing this decomposition of structure and foundation. We need a radical thought, and it reminded me of Nietzsche, and, you know, he's um, often... Uh, you know, he, he brought a hammer to philosophy. He philosophized with a hammer. And he's saying, we have to have this radical thought, this radical ideology that storms in and is noticed. People take notice of this idea. And I think we're at a standstill in, in our culture today where a lot of people, that silent majority that are just trying to fit in, right, and even almost kind of playing dead, I'm just going to go unnoticed so that I don't get caught up in this cancel culture, so that I'm not ostracized for for voicing my, my views, my beliefs. I think we're going to need people to, to, to stand up in that radical thought, and it's it's almost as if the radical thought that we need, you know, in ages past would have just been a normal thought. It would have been a traditional thought, but we live in a state, an age in society where we've turned up what values mean, we've turned them upside down, we've turned tradition upside down, and we're going to need this radical thought, we're going to need people to remove themselves from the camouflage of safety, of just fitting in, of just getting by, and we're going to need them to stand up and have this radical thought, um, and I'm, you know, and there's no 
set definition of, of what it's going to take or, or what it will take, what school of thought will kind of correct this this crash course that we're headed in. Um, but I believe, um, kind of like Gillian Fay, that it's going to require some tradition. And he's, he's this conservative, conservative kind of alt-right guy. Um, but I believe tradition is what people need. I mean, we can look around us and we're in an identity crisis. I mean, literally, people identify as non-binary. Their boy identifies as girl, girl as boy. Um, we see this whole culture rising up kind of, well, what does it mean? You know, and, and then we have this division between parties, left, right. And well, what does it mean? What do they mean? And we're in a state of confusion. We have no foundation. And I think we've got, we've gotten such a comfortable state of just fitting in and kind of camouflaging ourselves from the negativity of the world, the chaos of the world. We've got soft in essence where we've enjoyed not having a predator, if you will, all constantly pursuing us. That now we're just at the whims of comfort, we're at the whims of weakness, we're at the whims of pushing the boundaries of what it means to be man, woman. We've got bored, we have no enemy pursuing us, right, and think about that. When you just fit in for so long, you forget that there actually is a predator that's waiting to eat you alive. And that predator, in the metaphorical sense, can be the collapse of civilization, it can be the collapse of, of principles, it can be the collapse of the very foundation that helped you build the freedom that you have to just sit back and relax in that degenerate mind state of, well, I can be whatever and be this, or I'm oppressed, or whatever um, ignorance we partake in. Because we don't have a true enemy pursuing us, so we think. And so we're going to have to need this radical thought that disrupts that. We're going to need that tradition that says, you know what, life isn't fair. Uh, and I think that's that's the big part of the problem right now. We live in we live in a culture, I think, that is, for, for lack of a better terminology or an example, that's just a bunch of children that were not told no, right? No, you can't do that. You can't no, right? You need to hear no. You got a participation trophy just because you showed up? No. That's not how life works. You don't get rewarded because um, you you like the competency to, to, to perform. You have to get better. You need merit to, in order to enjoy the privilege, the reward. And so we live in a culture, a generation, um, a couple of generations, where um, you've just kind of been handed the gold star for showing up. And, and that goes along with that mimicry where we're just kind of fitting in, following, and I'm not here to disrupt the system. Let's all get on this. Um, level playing field, but utopia doesn't exist, and, and we're, we're finding that out as cancel culture cancels out the people that, that they're saying has oppressed them from reaching a state of utopia. The very cancelers are beginning um, to cancel the ones they oppose, and and Nietzsche says this in, in the master morality and the slave morality, you know, those that have achieved success, those that never felt entitled, they just got up and exerted their their willpower to become better and to overcome the harshness of life because life is harsh. Those have that master achiever, let's go grab life by the horns mentality and that slave morality, those that cry victimhood and they cry oppression. They um, have that trans value system where they're saying, <laughs> I want what you want, I envy you, I have that resentment, but I don't want to put in the work to get it because I'm just kind of fitting in. I fit in for so long and it's easy and it's comfortable here, so I'm just going to start calling you the oppressive. I'm going to start calling you that master that wants to oppress me and you've held me down and you're this this racist, and so I'm going to come about with this critical race theory and these Marxist ideas, and I'm going to flip the script, because really, I, I resent you, and I want that power, and I want what you have, but I don't want to put in the work. And so that's kind of the school of thought. We see that kind of that entitlement of, I want it, but I don't want to put in the work, so however you got it must have been uh, done by evil deeds. Um, I'm sure you coerced us lower level ones into just giving up all our freedoms and all of our money and and all of our resources for you so that you could enjoy the materialistic life that you do that 
that I um, despise, yet I have an envy for. And so it's causing this confused state that we're in. I don't even think those on the left, um, you know, they, they bring about more arguments than they do solutions. And um, those on the right um, are so firm in, in what they believe that they, they can't adapt to anything. And so I, I, I think we are going to see a radical thought come along. And it's going to come from those that are courageous enough to be ostracized, to be canceled, because cancel culture is going to cancel them. And even those um, traditionally that are on the right are going to say, whoa, that's, that's kind of radical, going back to the old traditions that got us here. We're kind of advanced. And um, I believe it's going to be a school of thought that recognizes, yes, we've evolved. We've evolved um, uh, in both genders. We've evolved in, in like civil rights. We've evolved intellectually. Um, so it's going to be a very, um, a very, a very acute evolution school of thought. That's, but yet radical in the sense that tradition got us here. Tradition is going to get us out of it, and I don't think it's going to look necessarily um, uh, like a picture th that those on the left would want painted. I don't think it's necessarily going to be a picture that those on the right would want painted. I think it's going to be something bigger than both. It's going to be based on kind of that archaic tradition um, that's going to be so radical that it's going to leave most scratching their head until they're willing to get out of that mimicry that we've all been conditioned, whether left or right or woman, man, to, to be, believe in and to follow. It's going to be a return to something that's very simple. It's going to be a, a return to something um, that's not such uh, materialistic driven. It's going to be a, f uh, a breath of fresh air where it's like whew, no more stress, no more anxiety, no, no more having to keep up with the Joneses, no more comparative narrative where I have to constantly compare myself to this person and this and that. It's, I think it's going to be a, remove, a removal from a lot that we know. It's going to require um, some discomfort. Right, and, and and that's that's the theme of that mimicry. We camouflage ourselves to fit in because it's comfortable. Um, there's less chance of hurt. There's less chance of pain. There's less chance of death. Um, but in order for a revolutionary idea, in order for a radical thought to begin to be implemented, there's going to be um, you're going to be ostracized. You're going to be kind of thought as that crazy person, and who do they think they are? But like any great innovations, like any great philosophies at at first birth, um, they're often quite thought as lunatics, as a little out there. Um, but it is those outliers that um, over a course and over periods of time have brought about great change, um, respectable change, admirable change, and they're held in esteem. And so I think that that's what's needed, that's what's going to take place, is there's going to be this radical um, thought, there's going to be really this radical school of thought that's going to be brought about. Um, and it's going to be looked at as, hmm, I, I don't know, but it's going to be a foundation that needs, and I think we're eventually going to build upon that, and it may be years later, hopefully not, that we look back in admiration and respect for those people that brought it about, um, but it's definitely needed. We look around us now, and, and we're in chaos, and civilization is going to collapse, and, and not to be fear-mongering because all civilizations collapse, but they are rebuilt by those strong men that are capable. Um, and so I think that's what it's going to take. It's going to take those that are courageous enough to at least begin to explore um, other ideas, other ideologies besides what's comfortable, what we've been taught to mimic and, and kind of uh, been rehearsed out on the stage of life. And now we're just kind of playing that out because that's what we know and we follow that course for so long that it that it's hard to break out of that. So the idea becomes, well, can you and I become a person that begins to think of what the hell is it going to take to get out of here? And then can we have the courage to begin to um, at least implement that in our life? But I think it's 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 going to take someone that's radical and begin to speak that and say, hey, um, no more of the BS. This is what it's going to take. And... and take that risk of being ostracized and looked at as kind of a lunatic and who the hell are they but we need those people we've always needed them in society those are the great men and women that we look at with respect generations later hopefully we can recognize 
God, and history repeats itself. Please let us be open to someone that can maybe bring us back to excellence. And I think tradition is that path that's going to get us to excellence because tradition has always um, helped rebuild societies and cultures and men and women when they collapse.